Hello and welcome to BrittanyRust.com. I am Brittany and today I'm trying something new and then I'm, adding, then I'm adding a video to the normal devotional content on the website. So you'll watch this video, then there will be some further reading for you to go through to take you deeper into the study, and then there will be some questions for you to think about, to meditate on that will, I hope, really solidify what God's speaking to you, to your heart in regards to this study on Saul out of 1 Samuel chapters 9 and 10. So we're going to jump right on in. As we know, Saul was the first king over the people of Israel, and uh, unfortunately his life takes a tragic turn of events. He really allows pride to capture his heart. He becomes disobedient to what God has called him to do, and it's really sad. Um, and I hope that in and of itself is a lesson for you, for me, and that let's start, let's start strong. Let's run the race with perseverance, and let's finish strong. And unfortunately, that's not the case for Saul. However, the the beginning of his life is really fascinating and really encouraging for you and me because what we really gather from Saul in these two chapters is that he was a normal person, uh, not aspiring really to do anything um, incredible, just living his life. Um, his family was wealthy. They were from the tribe of Benjamin. But God had something so much bigger in store for uh, Saul than he ever imagined, and that he ends up becoming the king of Israel. And it reminds me of Ephesians 3, where scripture says he is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. And we see that in the life of Saul in chapters 9 and 10. And I'm going to jump in and go into that. Uh, like I said, Saul, wealthy family, some donkeys go missing. So it's not a glamorous job. It's not like, oh, man, going out looking for donkeys. That's how, you know, that's the journey to kingship. That's never even crossed the mind of Saul. He was just doing his duty as the son in that his father had asked him to go look for the donkeys. He took a servant with him, and he went and he looked for some donkeys. It's nothing fascinating, you know. It's not the great beginnings of a king. But he goes out with his servant. They journey three days, and they don't find the donkeys. So, you know, Saul's beginning to think, well, my dad's probably getting worried, so we're not looking or we're not finding the donkeys. Let's go ahead and go back. And the servant suggests, hey, we're close to Samuel, the great prophet. Everybody knows who Samuel is. He might know where the donkeys are, so how about we just go and we ask him, and then we'll go back. And so Saul thinks that, thinks that that's a great idea. They go into the city. What's so cool is that God had everything in motion already. He'd already talked to Samuel about Saul. Saul was on this journey because God wanted him to be on this journey. So God has a plan. Everything's in motion. Saul goes into the city, and he runs into Samuel. Of, of all people. And it says that uh, they had gone into the town, and just then Saul approached Samuel at the gateway and asked, can you please tell me where the seer's house is? Well, Samuel's the seer, and he's just the person he's looking for, so God has a plan. And right before this, interestingly enough, is that Samuel had seen Saul from afar, and the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, that's the man I told you about. He will uh, he will rule my people. So again, God has this plan in motion. He says, I am the seer, Samuel replied. Go up to the place of worship ahead of me. We will then eat there together, and in the morning I'll tell you what you want to know and send you on your way. Oh, and don't worry about those donkeys that were lost three days ago, for they have been found. Here's the cool part, and pay attention to this. Samuel says, and I'm here to tell you that you and your family are the focus of all of Israel's hope. I mean, think about that for a second. Here's Saul. He's a young man. He's just out looking for some donkeys. And the great Samuel asked him to join him for dinner. And he tells him, you are the hope of Israel. I mean, think about that. I mean, what would you think in that moment? You're just a normal person. And somebody tells you, you're the hope of your nation. I mean, that, that's got to be just an incredible moment. Uh, Samuel ends up inviting him to the uh, out to dinner. Um, he's given the, the guest of honor position at the table. He's given the choice to meet. He stays in the same place that Samuel is staying. I mean, he's really treated with great honor. And again, I mean, Saul must be thinking, who am I? So 
the next morning, Samuel goes to Saul, tells him to get up. I have something to tell you. Picking up in chapter 10, it says that Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it over Saul's head. He kissed Saul and said, I am doing this because the Lord has appointed you to be the ruler over Israel, his special possession. Samuel's telling him right here, guess what? God has called you to be the king of Israel. He then goes on to tell him that as he journeys home, a series of events are going to take place. They're going to be confirming to Saul of what God has spoken about Saul's future. He ends up prophesying. He makes a sacrifice. And he does return home. And what I find so interesting is that when he returns home, he runs into his uncle and doesn't even tell his uncle what had just happened. I mean, the guy just became the king of Israel, and he doesn't even mention it to his family. Uh, maybe that's humility. Maybe he just knew it wasn't the right time. Maybe um, it was fear, because when we go on throughout the chapter, we learn that eventually... Uh, Samuel gathers all of Israel together, every tribe. And what he does is he calls out the tribe of Benjamin, and then he calls out Saul's family, and then he calls out Saul, but Saul isn't anywhere to be found. He, you know where Saul is? Saul's hiding among the baggage. I mean, he must have been a little freaked out because the guy, in the moment he was supposed to be crowned king, is hiding in the baggage. Uh, maybe he was feeling the weight of what was about to take place, but... He ends up coming out of the out of the baggage, out from hiding, and then uh, he's he's proclaimed king. It says that uh, Samuel said to all the people, "This is the man the Lord has chosen as your king. No one in all of Israel is like him." Saul was a man, not of any importance. He was just out looking for some donkeys, and. Samuel says, no one in all of Israel is like him. He will be your king. And all the people reply, long live the king. I mean, think about this, guys. Uh, it's so encouraging for us to know that no matter where we're at in life, God has a plan for us that is bigger than we can ever hope or imagine. I mean, I am a dreamer, a huge dreamer by nature. I'm a visionary. And even I can't comprehend or imagine all that God has planned for me. And, he, and you can't imagine that. I mean, maybe you have a dream of being a business owner, but you have no idea how all the resources are going to come together for you to open your own business. Or maybe you want to have a family, but you're single and there are no prospects. And you're wondering, how am I ever going to have a family? Maybe you want to be a writer or a CEO or a designer. Designer, The list could go on and on of what you guys want to do with your life. But guess what? You can't imagine the doors that God wants to open for you. God wants to use you in an incredible way. It doesn't matter about your past. It doesn't matter about your circumstances. It doesn't matter about your failures. Um, if God has chosen you and, and has a plan for you, he will equip you because you are his child. He created you. He loves you. He gave his only son for you. You, If he gave his only son for you, and the plan that he has for you, how could how could that not be bigger than anything you ever imagined for your own life? God wants to take care of you. He wants to use you. I mean, and it doesn't matter about where you're at right now. Maybe you have no resources. Maybe you're in a season of real discouragement. I'm coming out of a very long season of discouragement. But now I'm watching God do what I, more than I could have ever imagined. This is my first week in Colorado. I've always wanted to live here. I'm getting married in three weeks. God's opening doors for ministry I couldn't have imagined. And I can look back and know that was only because God did it. And you're going to say the same thing one day. So I hope and my prayer for you is that every morning you wake up with an excitement of what God is going to do in your life that day. That around every corner you're looking for opportunity and possibilities um, that supersede anything you could ever hope for. And that you watch God use you in a way that you could have never imagined before. So after this video is over here in a few seconds, there's going to be further reading. I hope that you read that. I hope you think about the questions and that God really solidifies in your heart what he wants to speak to you. And you walk away with um, some encouragement, with some direction, and know that God loves you. God has a plan for you. God wants to take you when you're out looking for donkeys and make you the proverbial king in your life. And watch him do that. Watch him use you in a way that you can never have imagined. Love you guys.